Promise. Benvenuto Francesco. Grazie, grazie, <ride> grazie mille. Welcome, welcome, bienvenuto, bienvenido. Uh, thank you very much. So I have two good news today, three actually. I'm not going to play any instruments, but thank you for the introduction. But that's true, actually. I've, I've been more used to be on stage playing something than talking about GRX, but I do enjoy doing both things. The second good news is that this is the first TechX conference. So, first of all, I wanted to thank you all for being here. Thank again the organization for this fantastic venue and uh, having organized all this uh, in a relatively short time because last year we decided that we're not going to have any more just one big summit for GayRx like we did in, in the past two years. Actually, uh, even before I joined, there was a third summit, but we decided we want to address Okay, one summit at the end of the year with all the views around GairX, but we want to have a market X, a market conference dedicated to market adoption, where we put on stage all the projects adopt, adopting the GairX standard that my um, uh, valuable uh, predecessors guests have already introduced, and a tech conference dedicated to techies, dedicated to developers. Why? Because our future is going to be driven by technology. Let's be honest, we need skills. This is the most valuable um, thing we need to develop. So we need to talk about GRX and how it works. And that's going to be the purpose of the next two days. So I invite you all to contribute. There's a third good message. I'm one of the two gentlemen in the old building wearing a suit. Tomorrow I will get changed, promise. So be free. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So, I'm supposed to stay in 15 minutes, that's going to be the biggest challenge, my team knows, uh, but I will do my best. Why GaiaX? Well, let me start quoting somebody else's, and not necessarily a European analyst. So here you see something very recent, it's a pretty recent uh, report from IDC I ran into by accident, actually a friend of mine sent me. And believe me, this is pretty new. If you ask the same questions two years ago, no way you could get the same answers. People didn't give a, I don't say the word, about sovereignty in the business. Look at that, 86% of the CEOs believe sovereignty is going to be their highest priority together with cybersecurity. That's a great step ahead. Think about it. 76% believe sovereignty is going to drive major uh, new markets, new global markets opening. So it's a huge business opportunity. Last but not least, talking about sovereignty, everybody understands trust is the priority zero thing. In engineering term, priority zero is higher than one. So you need trust to ensure sovereignty, and sovereignty is not just for the sake of politicians. It's a real business opportunity. Without trust, you won't be able to sell services, products, whatever. It's not a matter of Europe against US or it doesn't really matter. Everybody understands we need to get rid of the oligopolism of a few, of a handful of technology providers that are acting as a matter of fact as data controllers. And data is ruining our lives. From the morning we wake up to the moment we go to bed, our life is ruled by technology and data. Why? Why? Because if we don't believe so, well, look at the numbers. Data economy is ranking about one, billion, uh, um, uh, one trillion euros in 2025. Exactly speaking, the, the projection is 830 billions, which is roughly 6% of the European GDP. And, and that's Europe. So you can imagine the numbers are bigger at worldwide level. Now, Europe owns less than 5% of this market share. And that's already a problem. But the opportunities are huge. We have data everywhere. Everybody is asking for a data-driven solution. Everybody is asking for more controllable technology. Sensorization is covering the planet. And definitely in Europe, we have high-quality data. Why? Because we have high-quality processes, production processes in any industry. We have very high level of differentiation in languages, territories, etc. So our data is much uh, higher quality than others. Still, we cannot exploit it. And look at the bottom right side. 
our European cloud service provider have reduced their market share to one third in three years. And the market share of cloud in Europe has tripled in three years. So do you, do you, do you see the trend? We are becoming more and more hostage of a handful of technology providers that are ruling our future. Why we need Gaia-X? Because, because if all these things are true, we need to move in a new era where we start creating federated ecosystems. Because nobody, no single company, no single country, being Germany, Spain, or Italy, doesn't matter, can survive this new level of competition without federating, federating their data in order to create new products, better process, uh, processes, you know, faster time to market, new services on top of existing products driven by data. So a data-centric economy, no more product-centric economy. This is the new way of building digital value chains that Marco was mentioning before. Also, we need to make sure we create common data spaces because without creating this common pool, let me say, it's not actually a real data lake or nothing like that, I will come back to this point, but creating these common places where everybody can freely share data, there cannot be any data economy. Let's be honest. And data are hidden, are untapped. Most of the data is not utilized. Last but not least, we need trusted platforms to make it happen. Without trust, like we said before, nothing is going to happen. Otherwise, it would have happened before in the past. We don't need new technology to exchange data, let's be honest. So what's, what's in Gaia-X to make it happen? Gaia-X is a, a non-for-profit association with the aim to boost data economy in Europe and, of course, globally, because data economy is a global business. It's open to everybody, but it's strongly based on the European principles of freedom, human centricity, and of course, um, trust, like I said before. What we do is very simple. And I don't know if all of you know GAIAX, maybe you were shy not to raise your hand. Every time I speak, many people don't know what GAIAX is. So I'm trying to give you a very quick overview. We do three things. We deliver specs, code, and qualification methods in order to verify the compliance to our specs and our code. What we want to achieve is regain control of the technology. It's a simple slide I keep using since two years and a half, actually. It's pretty easy. We need to move from a model of concentrated, proprietary, and opaque technology into a new model of transparent, open, and distributed technology. Why? Because data is distributed, because interoperability requires transparency. There is no way you can have interoperability without open source, for example. There's no way you can have um, you know, technology adoption without transparency, because without transparency, you don't get the trust. Without controllability, you don't get the trust. Without compliance to an, a commonly agreed set of rules, you don't get the trust you need. You don't trust the technology, so you don't use it. In a word, what we mean by trust and sovereignty is transparency, controllability, and interoperability of digital services. What are we doing? We are trying to reconnect these two ecosystems. The ecosystem of data, which is fragmented, disjoint, there is no common way to exchange data, and most of the data are untapped, unutilized, under the desk. And the world of technologies, infrastructure technologies, or data infrastructures, if you want, that again are fragmented, you know, private, virtual, public clouds, all responding to proprietary standards, not interoperable by design, not by accident, and therefore they are not absolutely joined. So through Gaia-X, we want to join these two ecosystems, the ecosystem of data, ensuring secure, safe exchange of data in common data spaces through joint federated infrastructures. And we do that through a framework made of three pillars, as you see. Data exchange, because you need to exchange data. Federation, because you need to federate to trusted participants in order to make this happen. And compliance, of course, because all the participants need to trust the underlying technology. Last but not least, what we do is totally in line with the strategy of the European Union, which is fundamentally based on two pillars as well. On one side, the need to create common data spaces in Europe to boost data economy, of course, and leverage the power of our European data. And on the other side, build a computing continuum, because we need to 
overcome, we need to bridge the gap between central cloud and edge. Otherwise, we will never take advantage of any 5, 6G, whatever, or, or any edge computing and any data produced at the edge. So what GaiaRx do is, in simple terms, on one side, promoting the creation of digital value chains, which is this concept of creating common data space, sectorial or cross-sectorial data spaces. You heard about Francisca talking about tourism, healthcare, industry, etc. That's what we do. We have 11 Lighthouse projects today, and we have 100 projects uh, already working in different contexts to build these common data spaces. On the other side, we promote the creation of, uh, let me say, federated infrastructures in order to run these data. So, data infrastructures and data spaces, or common data spaces and common data infrastructures, if you want. That's what we do. How we do it? We developed a framework. It's on our website. Easy. Three columns, three rows. It's a matrix. We have uh, the three columns, which are the three pillars of our framework, compliance, federation, and data exchange. And three rows are the functional specs, the technical specs, and the code. You can go and see what we do. And you can contribute, of course, we hope we co you contribute as much as possible into the open source uh, code. And that's going to be one of the challenges of these two days. But while we're doing that, we are promoting the move from data exchange, data gathering, into data spaces. What is the difference? The difference is fundamental. We have always exchanged data. But actually, exchanging data is different from making data available seamlessly in a common data space. In one case, you use the technology and contractualization in order to establish the way you exchange data through APIs, through contractual rules, through many sort, any sort of technologies or USB or whatever type of uh, uh, you know, access technology to data. In the other case, you have basically all the data of all the participants available because they have agreed to make them available. The difference is technology, in the case of data spaces, is used not to exchange data, but to trust the participants. It's a paradigm shift. So if people confuse data spaces as big data pools, big APIs to create a marketplace of data, they are wrong. Data spaces are new, a new concept where you basically implement the mechanism to trust participants in a federation to freely and securely share the data they agreed to share, of course, in order to build reciprocal value. So the technology focus is in building trust, not in exchanging data. We have lots of data connectors and data exchange mechanisms. We're not rewriting this from scratch. That's not the purpose of GaiaRx. If, you if you're not convinced about it, think about what a data space problem is. In order to build a data space, the only problem you need to fix is trust. You have to put together competitors, clients and providers, maybe from different countries, even more if you connect different type of domains. But how can you put them together? You have two problems. The business, problems, the, the, the business problem, which GaiaRx cannot solve, but we are helping through our members you know, and our projects, creating lessons learned, or blueprints to make it happen. But the business problem is in the business side. You have to find use cases that provide common reciprocal value to all the participants. Otherwise, why should I share my data with you as a competitor or as a provider? Then you have to find common, uh, you know, um, let me say, you have to trust, let me say, the participants in uh, many different ways. You have to trust their identity. You have to trust the service credentials they expose, you have to trust the quality of the data they, they provide. You have to trust their usage of your data, so you have to trust the fact that they are respecting your data usage policies. You have to trust the data infrastructures that you use, and you have to have some also uh, federation governance mechanisms you trust. You have to trust the federator, which in regulatory t terms is the intermediary. And of course, you have to, some place to run all these trust services. So in a nutshell, the business problem is the business problem. It's a big deal. But if we want to survive in any economy, we need to move into data spaces and digital value chains. But if you look at the technical problem, the only problem to solve is a problem of trust. Therefore, the solution is not having multiple trusts. You need to have one common framework of trust and one common engine to verify those trust rules. That's what GaiaRx provides. 
through the GAIX framework and through the digital clearinghouse, which is the operationalization of what I'm telling you. In a nutshell, we provide this mechanism through, uh, as the core, let me say, of our framework, compliance. Compliance means defining a set of rules and a set of verification methods. But what we do is we are building a platform that automates as much as possible and simplifies for sure the qualification and verification of the credentials of the services in a collaboration between uh, participants, users, providers, and, uh, and resources that are exchanged. And we do that through these um, mechanisms that you will go through the presentations in these two days, and my friend Pierre and the team will be capable to go and deep dive. But basically, you recognize some elements over there, verifi verifiable credentials, self sovereign identity. Somebody may say, well, this is kind of Web3 stuff. Yes, it is. Somebody asked me the question, so what's the relationship between Web3 and GaiaRx? Well, actually, we should be silly if we wouldn't look at what Web3 means. But again, we should be silly if we believe Web3 is the solution of any problem. There's always you know, a sunrise and a sunset in any technology. So we're not looking at the technologies. We're not looking at the blockchain. We're not certainly looking at the crypto. But Web3 is introducing a new concept of digital democratization in principle. And this principle goes from semantic description, decentralization, self sovereign identity, all concepts that you will find into the GaiaX framework. They are basically the, con the uh, contextualization of some Web3 concepts in order to build a new generation of trustworthy services. So GaiaX defines a new standard to qualify, verify participants and resources in a digital collaboration. And GAIAX use and extend Web3 principles in its framework to promote digital trust as a foundational element for digital democratization. Now, you heard the problem, the solution is the framework, and the oper operationalization is the creation of this network of digital clearinghouses. So the clearinghouses uh, is a network of access points where you can get access to the services that implement what GAIAX has defined in the framework. So the Federation, the Data Exchange, and the Compliance Services. You can look at the, guy, at the clearinghouse as a kind of, <laughs> the clearinghouse stands to GaiaRx like the registrar stands to the internet. You need some you know, access point to do the things you want to do, it to be trusted, et cetera, et cetera. But remember, we're moving from Web to Web 3. So we hope that GaiaRx will become, through the GaiaRx clearinghouse, uh, an interesting uh, model where we can match demand and offer of anyone who want to become part of the GaiaX ecosystem. So the clearinghouse is not just a node execution, executing in a, you know, in, in a container uh, a couple of services that have been defined and you will see in these two days. It's not just that. It's a one-stop place to go if you really want to make use of GaiaRx. And you don't have time to understand what it is. You don't maybe need to do that. And we need to bridge the gap of complexity. We need to bridge the gap of technology adoption through trust mechanisms that are going to, make are going to be made available through the clearinghouse in an easier way. And uh, with this, we hope to accelerate, like we said at the beginning, the creation of a real borderless data uh, economy. Priorities and enablers, where we are. We have a five years plan. 21 was the year of definition of what GAIAX is. 22 was the year of development of GAIAX, in particular the GAIAX framework, and where we started developing the first projects. 23 is the year of growth. We are delivering the first releases of the clearinghouse. We have already delivered the first at the end of March, and we have a release plan to the end of the year where we are increasing the number of features. And I invite you all to contribute to making the clearinghouse as complete and as easy to be used by anyone as possible. But we want to achieve some specific objectives. First of all, you see on the right side, 23 is the turnaround. We want to move from a model where the ASBL, the, the association, pushes into a model where the market pulls. To make it happen, we need to build something the market needs, adopts successfully, and Catena X, Manufacturing X, and CSN, and many other projects that are in the lighthouse list 
are already making it happen. So if the market pulls, then we can uh, achieve our priorities, which in turn are three. Delivering the clearing house, without delivering the clearing house, nobody would understand how to make use of GaiaRx. Make sure that we engage our members. We need them to make projects. We, we need them to adopt GaiaRx, and we need also to enable them through you know, a set of services like training certifications, the clearing house services, of course, etc. And we need to make sure they help us in market adoption. Two ways. Providers should publish GaiaX compliance services, and users should introduce GaiaX compliance into their procurement rules. We are building market enablers for our members. You see what we call the BIS 10 here, 10 lines of business enabler services. You, you saw something like, of course, we deliver documentation, specifications, etc. Those documentation will evolve, like Boris said, quarterly. And we will provide, uh, of course, a different type of access to the members versus the non-members in the next months and years, so that the members can evolve the standard. We have the clearing house, so we are making the services available. And again, we will give free access to the members to the clearing house services, and we will evolve this. And maybe in the future it will be totally free, but we need to create this momentum and market adoption. So we're going to create trainings, certifications, test bench, um, and other type of services to enable the market adoption. Just to conclude, I wanted to give you a snapshot of where we are and where we were just a couple of years ago. So now we are, uh, and actually I used the wrong slide, it's not MarketX, it's TechX, but we had also MarketX, but we had just one summit. Today we have uh, the summit plus MarketX and TechX, where we are here today. We have grown our membership significantly. We have grown our lighthouse from zero to 11, and like I said, we have a pipeline of 100 projects. We have grown our hubs. We have grown our vertical teams. We have created a demo catalog of 1,500 plus services that slowly will become real GAIAX compliance services in a public catalog uh, in the next months. And we have started deploying uh, the first nodes of the digital clearinghouse uh, network that, that I described. So in a nutshell, we at GAIAX believe we are creating a real um, European Union for data economy. Why? Because we put together the technology side of it, the regulatory, regulatory side of it, the economical side, uh, uh, side of it, and we are building, let me say, a glue, a common engine to make it happen. So. Thank you very much for being uh, here today and participate to TechX. We really look forward for your contribution and enjoy the rest of the conference.